Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, our guest is none other than Jonathan J.T. Tenenbaum. He is the host and executive producer of Domain Sherpa, the number one domain industry podcast. I almost said number two, second to Alvin Brown, y'all. I almost did it. But hey, it's Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. He's also the Chief Operating Officer and General Counsel of Media Options, the world-leading domain name brokerage agency. And so today, JT and I, we discuss how he went from spitting bars by night to passing the bar by day and how a background in legal landed him into legal and operational roles in the domain industry. Next, we discuss how Media Options is expanding beyond domains to the all-encompassing umbrella of digital assets. JT then shares his vision for how Domain Sherpa will expand its programming from interviews and Sherpa reviews to a broader network of topics such as NFTs, crypto, sports, and much more. We then discuss the parallels between the buying and selling of domain names and the Board Ape Yacht Club NFTs. We then also talk a bit about sports, money, as well as life lessons. And last but not least, JT explains why I'm still awaiting a Namejet t-shirt to be delivered to my doorstep. So with that, JT, welcome, my man, and thank you for making time to join us today. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. First questions first. Where is my shirt, man? (laughs) Where's my shirt at? I got you. I got you. I, I <laughs> promised you a Namejet shirt way back in the day. I'm not with Namejet anymore, but I I do have some swag. Actually, what I'm gonna get, what I'm gonna send you, I can send you a Namejet shirt, but it, it will probably have been worn before, you know, because again, we're talking about the swag that I got in the drawer now. But what I'm gonna do instead, because you know what I'm saying, I don't want to send you an old used shirt of a company that I don't. I mean, although you know, shout out to Namejet, they still. Sp- sponsor the uh, domain ship review which in fact we're going to have you on in a couple of weeks which i'm excited about been trying to get you on there for a minute but we actually just went live with the media options uh store where we've got media options swag we got domain sherpa swag we got the off the market forever hoodie so i think you know i know it's not cold down there deep in the heart of texas but i'm gonna send you one of the hoodies man that's what that's what, what we're gonna do that'll make right. it make it right Literally would have would have been on time this past winter. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yes. So I was but but fortunately I did have a park.io hoodie. So hey, okay. anything anything you send, we will receive, man. All right. No, I'm definitely yeah, that's what we're gonna do, man. I'm gonna send you the I'm gonna send you the Sherpa swag instead. So I cracked up because uh, what made me actually think about it, I was watching one of the last episodes of, of Sherpa, and uh, I think you had a name jet shirt on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I wear, yeah, that's part of the deal. I wear one every time. <laughs> I have a banner behind me, you know, so I probably should have some kind of background. But uh, yeah, man, so I wear the shirt during the show, and because, uh, you know, every we do the domain show reviews, which is every other week, and then we review a handful of names at Namejet. So, you know, it's just giving them a little bit of visibility and uh you know being able to let the folks see the branding and all that good stuff so uh you know all part of part of the deal nice so i mean speaking of sherpa like are you settled in now because it's been what a couple of months now since you joined media options yep yep join media options back in uh like october of last year which was 2020 and man, uh so almost yeah, a man. year i know i know now i didn't take over sherpa right right away We were still kind of working out some of the details and then Tess moved on, you know, which kind of created the, uh, you know, the opening, if you will, you know, so then I just a natural fit for me to step into it. And uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think we're at the point now where I mean, I got the microphone. I don't have the uh, I don't have a spit guard like you do. You know what I mean? I got to maybe. (laughs) But um, but yeah, no. And I think we're into a pretty nice rhythm with the show. You know what we're trying to do with Domain Sherpa, because, you know, and, and, you know, big shout out to Mike Seiger. um, You know, he developed, you know, created this thing. I mean. Sherpa's 10 years old now, which is wild, you know, so and uh, really built something really special. Um, And now because, you know, we really look at ourselves not just as a domain business, but as a digital asset business. Right. And uh, and under that umbrella, you know, everybody knows anyone that knows 
Drew, Andrew Rosner, for the folks that don't know, um, you know, who is the CEO and founder of Media Options and also the publisher and owner now of Domain Sherpa. He bought Domain Sherpa from Siger a few years ago. Um, you know, Drew's heavy, heavy in Bitcoin, crypto. You know, we've been doing a lot with NFTs lately. So everything that falls under this digital assets umbrella, we actually have the domain name digitalassets.com. Nice. Which, uh, you know, anybody, you know, holler if anybody, you know, <laughs> wants to wants to put up a real offer. But um, anyway, but, um, you know, it, at, at the end of the day, it's like it all fits under that umbrella because, you know, domains are pretty is still our, our first and foremost. You know, that's the thing. People are like, man, you guys talk so much about crypto and NFTs or, you know, what's up with domains? It's like, look, domains are always the, you know, sort of the tent pole, you know, the the foundation. But, you know, you, you'd be sleeping not to recognize the fact that, you know, crypto trends NFT trends, not just driving a ton of really cool, interesting activity in those particular spaces, but, you know, they also influence a ton of what's going on in the domain space, you know, and in fact, some of our biggest sales this year were, you know, domain or uh, were crypto or NFT related domain names. And there's no doubt that that they kind of all relate to one another in some form or fashion. And uh, again, under that big umbrella of digital assets. So what we've been trying to do with the Sherpa show uh, is is turn Sherpa from what was kind of like one show, which was the Domain Sherpa Review, as well as uh, interviews into more of a network where we brought on a few more folks to kind of do some things. You know, we brought Josh Reason and his Digital Fortune podcast in, right. you know, to kind of shore up some of it's really to handle some of the more of the domainer focused interviews with, you know, some of the people in and around the space to really hone in on that kind of content. We still do the domain Sherpa reviews every other week with the uh, the name jet names as well as what we play the domain game. So get ready for that, where we name the domain that we uh, you know somebody that everybody recently either bought or sold. We would keep in score. Now the winner gets some of that media options or domain Sherpa swag. So I was talking about Josh; he won just the other day. So I just got I got to send him. I'm, it's literally on my list of things to do to send him a hoodie. And uh, you know we also got other stuff, mugs and mouse pads and all. I mean that's what's really wild too about Shopify. We did it as a Shopify site, and it's super user friendly and it's easy to kind of turn oh. any kind of logos and stuff and create. They do it on a one off basis. You know our intent is not to try to make money more so than right. just to have some kind of cool stuff that we can use as a company. But then also you know friends and family can grab too. And uh, you know and if there was a huge demand or if we find like you know, as we get into some more of this content around some of the NFT stuff and some of our stuff starts to build a little bit of a demand, then, you know, maybe we can figure out a different way. But, you know, Shopify creates, you know, uh, has a really, really good platform and, uh, you know, s system for being able to create stuff like that. You know, so again, expanding Sherpa beyond that, we've got now a show called Down the Rabbit Hole, which we've been also running on kind of like an every other week basis. We brought Yoni Belusov into the mix and Yoni for folks who, who know Yoni or don't know Yoni. I mean, way back. Yeah. Well, exactly, man. And, and really low key, you know, but he's also gotten really involved in crypto. I mean, enormously successful domain guy. Um, but um, so we've brought him on the show to talk about some of the crypto stuff. Uh, we just did a show about NFTs and uh, talking about the Board Ape Yacht Club and just some of the other crazy stuff around that, which has been just kind of wild. If you've seen, you know, on the Twitter, the avatars, people <laughs> with the apes, you know what I mean? It's all the Board Ape Yacht Club, you know, so there's just a lot of really neat, interesting stuff happening all in and around the space under the umbrella of digital assets. So we're trying to make sure that Sherpa covers all that while staying true to its roots with, you know, making sure the domain content is as good as ever and, uh, you know, just staying on the pulse of things. And yeah, so for me personally, you know, it was a matter of just kind of ramping up to that. I mean, I had a little bit of, you know, I see this rap thing back in the day. So you know, <laughs> I've, I've, I've had some experience in front of a microphone, you know, I think stepping in, I know, you know, having been involved in the domain space for so long of my, you know, career, it was, uh, you know, pretty easy for me because I, you know, having knowing the people that I know, right. you know, it was kind of a easy sort of step in, but it was still an adjustment, you know, and like all of a sudden it's like for a show or two, I kind of felt like, uh, you know, like Ricky Bobby <laughs> in Talladega Nights when he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> and, uh, <Dead> on them. <laughs> you know, but man, you know, the cool thing is, is again, having been in, in the domain space since, uh, well, I mean, you know, going back into my history, I mean, the sort of back of the napkin version, you know, I was a e <laughs> I was a e-commerce lawyer for a company called Saw Cactus that got bought by web.com back in 2009, mm. 2010, web.com acquires register.com. So, you know, that was for me up till that point, you know, we did business dealing with domain names, but it was the acquisition of register, you know, just over 10 years ago that for me really put me like really in the space to where, you know, from a domain investment, I can policy compliance, all of that kind of stuff. And, 
you know, and the domain space isn't huge. And I will say it's one of the most welcoming, positive communities, right? So, right. you know, that's what also made it pretty cool and easy for me to step in into the role of hosting Sherpa was because, you know, the folks that we have on the show are, you know, friendly faces that are good people, you know, that have had success in the space because they they work hard, they do things the right way, but they're also good, you know, again, good people doing good business. And, uh, you know, when you have folks like Mike Seiger, who's, you know, consistently and constantly supportive, he'll hit me up, you know, and be like, hey, man, you got to stay closer to the microphone. <laughs> you, know, or like, you know, he'll he'll give me a lot of those kind of pointers and everything. And, uh, you know, but, you know, and he's the OG, right? He's the guy who created the whole thing. And, and obviously Drew is like, you know, working for Drew is, is, is the bomb. Like he's, a, he's a good dude. Uh, everybody knows he's, he's a character, but at the same time, he's one of the most <laughs> successful domain, you know, entrepreneurs ever. Indeed. And, uh, and he's great, great people. And, uh, you know, we're doing some really cool, exciting things. So now we're working on organizing it from a business standpoint, right? So it's like, okay, we got some of the technical stuff down. I actually brought in my brother, my brother, Billy, who went to film school and did a lot of marketing and other stuff. And he had an opportunity to get more involved because COVID kind of created a bit of a disruption in, in his day job, which was a family business, unfortunately, but, you know, it gave him an opportunity to come on and, and help us a bit. So even if you look at the production of the shows, you know, we've got a lot of cool, even the domain game. And I do these right. AKAs where I'm like, you know, and, you know, so we, you know, throwing up the pictures and keeping score and we got a scoreboard yep. and all this kind of stuff. So really trying to just establish more of a professional, uh, you know, presence and really just kind of make it like, you know, just keep building and growing with it. Right. But, you know, but we're, we're trying to do it organically. We can't throw everything at it all at once. You know, we're also, it's, you know, it's very grassroots, even from how we're funding it and doing what we're doing there. So, but we're even putting together, you know, the ad package data and all that good stuff and tracking it better than we ever have before. The numbers keep going up, which is great. Anyway, that's the super long answer to your question, <laughs> which is, you know, my get so yeah, legs under me, man. We got a good team, good people. We got more stuff coming. And, uh, you know, we just continue to have fun with it because that's the thing, too. It's like by keeping it kind of fresh and talking about things that we're enjoying talking about. You know, we did this NFT show. We had Alan Dunn on there along with Shane and Josh and Drew and myself. And, uh, and I was legit looking forward to the show, you know, to get on there and like learn myself from somebody like Alan, who has been in the NFT space now longer than, than us. And, you know, and he's been heavy a year, right. And we've been in six months. I mean, that's, what's crazy about these things too. It's like, these things are all evolving and, and happening like in real time, you right. know, and it's not like, so even the folks who are experts and none of us present ourselves to be, oh my God, we're like, you know, we just know what we know. Right. And it's like, <laughs> And happy to share it to the extent that it's helpful or insightful or entertaining. Um, you know, obviously, when it comes to domains, I mean, you know, we're all very well versed because we've been doing this a decade right. or longer, you know, and, and the folks who have stayed in the space this long have obviously been successful in the space, right? It's not, it's, you know, domaining is easy to enter because, you know, the, the barrier of entry is as low as just registering a domain name. But to be a successful domain, you know, community member, right? Whether that's as an right. investor, working for a company, having a podcast or a blog or whatever, you know, to have that kind of longevity means you've had to have, you had to have success with it, you know? And right. uh, so, it, and it's not necessarily for the faint hearted, right? Everybody, you know, we've seen plenty of people who've come in. Some people come in with tons of money, all the enthusiasm. Look, we love it. Like more of the better, but you know, not everybody makes it work for themselves or they find the new next shiny object to go chase, or they just, you know, figure that this isn't for them. Right. I mean, and that's because it's like, I love domains for me. Domains are one of those things where, you know, it's a great equalizer, right. Where you could get access to people and companies and things that you otherwise wouldn't just as right. simple by simply having a domain name. Right. And we see it all that we've got a great portfolio. We've got a great uh, list of domains that we're brokering. Um, and uh, you know, and that, and a great group of clients that we're getting names for as well. And, uh, you know, and it's all because of domain names, you know, and, and then those domain contacts have led to crypto contacts, have led to NFT contacts and vice versa. And also why I think for us, which is why we've really, you know, been banging this drum about, you know, the, the idea of the umbrella really covering all of digital assets is because behind the scenes, we see how interconnected they are, you know, mm -hmm. and how beneficial it's been for our domain brokerage, domain buying and selling business to, you know, be as involved as we are in these other other areas, because there is a lot of overlap that, that some people who, you know, don't may not even realize, you know, so. So then, so then tell me this. So let, let's talk about these these apes that 
are just like going ape crazy. I, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> use, I would use another phrase, but I'm not, yes, yes. Uh, but, uh, it, but I, I look at this and I'm like, man, I see people's timelines and it's really, like you said, uh, Alan Dunn, he's been in it, you know, a year now, you guys have been in it six months. And so just trying to make sense of, is this the same thing? If most people will probably say, okay, Hey, it's like trading domains. Would you oh. say that that's, probably along somewhere along the lines. Of yeah. That. And that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, there's a lot of parallels, right? And, and now for what it's worth, I mean, Alan was, you know, has been involved in crypto a lot longer than he's been involved heavy in NFTs. And mm -hmm. I kind of think it's almost like this is like a gateway thing, right? Where you start mm -hmm. with domains and then, you know, crypto starting years ago when you had a few of these waves and things like that. And now NFTs have become, you know, over the last year really have gone, have gone and just exploded. So, um, you know, using particularly, so when we talk about the apes, we're talking about the Board Ape Yacht Club, uh, the BAYC. And, uh, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, what's crazy and cool about these and just for the folks who don't know, so they are an avatar project um, where there are 10,000 unique apes that were created through an algorithm, basically, where the, the development team effectively created a smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain that basically everybody uh, went in. There was a window where you could go in and mint them, where you basically created them for 0 0.08 Ethereum or whatever it was at the time, right? And once, uh, so you basically bought the ape before it was generated. And, you know, so it's a generative project or, or, or you know, uh, process. So once you had it, then at some point they were all revealed. So everybody saw what the apes were that they bought. So you're basically buying like, you know, almost like an egg. Right. And then it hatches or, you know, to see like what you ultimately, you know, <laughs> it's revealed and based on the different combination of traits that were all effectively created, you know, through the program, none of the apes are the same, but some of them share certain traits. They might have the same color fur. They might have the same color background. Some have daggers in their mouth. Some have bubble gum. Some have cigarettes. Some are wearing different hats. I've got an ape who's got like a hip hop jacket and a gold chain and a sushi, uh, you know, sushi headband, <laughs> like the Mr. Miyagi headband. Right. So I call him Sushi Groove or Cobra Kai. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> so basically what they are and everyone's like, so you're paying thousands of dollars for a JPEG. And it's like, yeah, but it's a unique piece of art that is uh, effectively recorded on the blockchain. And then based on the rarity of these things, it's like where you have domains where folks understand that there's a certain value in these things. And then they understand, too, that there are certain factors that will make some more valuable than others. Right. And like domains, it's very much an art and a science where, you know, it's not just, OK, what's the utilitarian value of the particular domain? But there are certain things that make them, again, more valuable than others. Right mm -hmm. now, there is more art than involved with domain names, but they, they are similar in kind of how, you know, how we view them. And, um, you know, so. You know, because again, like the ones that have super rare traits, there's even sites like, for example, Rarity Tools. I talk about this uh, even on the, the podcast that we dropped, which is rarity.tools. And that's the site where you can go and based on some of these different, and there's a lot of different ones. There's apes and there's all sorts of aliens and elephants and bears and bulls and, and, and lions and tigers. Oh my, you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and, uh, but the apes, I think are, you know, will, will end up holding their value being sort of one of the more, even when people talk about jumping into a project, they say, oh, I aped in, you know, right. because the apes have sort of established sort of the, the baseline. Now there are crypto punks, which are even more valuable than apes. Um, and those are like those eight bit. Uh, you know, faces basically. And, you know, they've mm. had them sell at Christie's or Sotheby's for a million dollars, some of the more wow. rare ones, which is crazy. I think the apes are a little bit more accessible. You know, we also talked about it too on the, the podcast that, you know, and, and Andrew made a really good point and I agree with it, which is, you know, in, in a lot of ways, we're bored apes. You know what I mean? We're just sitting in front of our computer all day, you know, and I think we can <laughs> kind of relate to those. Plus they're drawn very well. I think to me, I like the aesthetic look of the apes a little bit better than the eight bit pixelated punks and stuff. And, you know, so now what happens is too, so, so it's not just the JPEG because you get derivative rights where you can take your ape and now use them for whatever you want. You can put them on t-shirts, you could put, I mean, there are some folks doing comics, you know, we're actually working on a track with our apes. Like, so our apes combined, which is, you know, I got a couple of my apes, Drew's got a few, you know, Alan, Shane, Josh, like in a crew called the zoo, AKA the zoo tan clan. <laughs> and we're actually like working like I got a track ready to go that I'm like in a studio working on right now, which is the apes themselves are the artists. You know what I mean? So it's right. like 
in some cases what you have and people will have Twitter accounts. You know, in fact, I've got Twitter accounts for two of my apes. They got more followers than I do. You know what I mean? Wow. So it's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and it's because you got this ape follow ape. And like, so, you know, people are like, you know, it's this community that's built up around it. So that's the other thing too. It's like, you have the domain community, but the domain community is one that's very much focused on, you know, their individual business interests. Mm. But then you've got this, the NFT community, you know, which, so, you know, they, there's more of a sort of collaborative kind of like, Hey, we're all in this together. And this is the thing that binds us together. You know, they just recently had a meetup in LA where 50 ape holders got together. Kind of reminds me of the early days of Twitter. I don't know if you remember. There used wow. to be those Twitter, yeah, yeah. Used to be like those Twitter meetups. And I remember when people would do those, I'm like, really? Like you're just getting together. Cause y'all have like a social media account. <laughs> like it's like MySpace. like what? Like that Facebook thing. That's and, how it uh, all starts. Well, and that's what it is. So there's a combination of community and adoption and, you know, and, and the utility is really that, you know, it's, it's really just based on your creativity and your network and the ability to say, hey, I'm going to take this ape. And then, you know, Shane, for example, he has his honey business on beehouse.com, right. which is, you know, artisan honey. So he's got this batch of honey, this white honey that's like colorless honey. And I guess it's like pretty rare and tastes amazing, right? So he's got an ape, Colonel White and Fur, who's a white fur, old looking ape. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who he says he's sort of built a, a you know a whole backstory to him you know like he's the oldest AP. He even had an artist by the name of Joe Ruiz, uh, Joe Ruiz, who's a super talented dude who who takes the the apes and turns them into almost like what looks like sort of more traditional paintings. And uh, so he had him do like Colonel White and Fur with the walking stick and he's wearing the fatigues jacket and all this kind of stuff. So he's going to put him on the honey. So that's going to be the brand of the white honey is going to huh. be the Colonel White and Fur you know, with the, the ape on the jar. So it's like, you know, a building able to build and enhance brands and do things with them in ways that are, again, you're only really limited by your own creativity. Now you could say, okay, well, couldn't you just go do a logo and all this other stuff? But it's like, okay, but now you automatically, I mean, you've got almost 5,000 unique ape holders right now. Right. And I think that number will continue to grow, but at some point, you can't have any more, right? Because people will, there just aren't enough, like all the apes are already sold and bought, you know, in some cases, a project may take a while to sell out. You might be able to mm. even buy some after the fact, but the apes sold out pretty quick. And then over time, they've just built this value. Right now, the, the floor, if you were going to go onto OpenSea.io, which is one of the main platforms for buying and selling NFTs, it would cost you, I think it's six point something ether to buy an ape, which at two, you know, $2,200, $2,300, you know, per ETH, it's, uh, you know, so that's going to, so the cheapest ape right now is going to cost you $14,000 cash. And that's the cheapest one, man. Now that versus the one, some of them have sold for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, people like some of the other ape aesthetics or the rarity, right? That, you know, some of them have lasers coming out their eyes and they're doing like cool stuff or whatever. But for me, I'm an ape aesthetics guy. Like the apes that I, I bought, I bought apes that I felt like I could either look like me as much as like I could, you know, they don't have crazy stuff that I can't relate to. You know, they're not smoking cigarettes. They don't have eyes popping out their head. They're not zombies. You know what I mean? Because I felt like, you know, my first ape I bought, my man Lincoln Abraham, you know, is just wearing <laughs> BAYC hat. And he's, you know, and that's it. And I'm like, I could rock that hat. That could be me, you know? And, uh, you know, but then I got an ape that's a cheetah ape because there's almost like subcultures inside the apes, right? So you've got right, right. The cheetahs, which were the cheetah gang. So it's cheetah gang, weed a gang, you know what I mean? And uh, so I bought a cheetah ape. And, uh, and then I got another ape that, uh, like I mentioned, Cobra Kai, who is, is a hip hopper in the hip hop thread. We got like, you know, so Drew's got a couple of hip hop apes, a bunch of other people, uh, Kali Buds, the world famous art, uh, reggae artist. He's got a hip hop ape. He's in the thread with us. So it's just wild. That's another thing. So when we talk about how I love how domains can create opportunities to connect with people and things that you otherwise wouldn't, you know, the apes do some of the same thing because now you've also got famous, uh, like some, a bunch of pro basketball players, Josh Hart, who's a Villanova guy, shout out to Nova. Um, you know, you've got uh, Tyrese Halliburton, who was a uh, rookie, plays with Kings. You've got uh, LaMelo Ball, who's rookie of the year. And then you also have like Des Bryant, the wide receiver who used to play for the Cowboys, as well as like the kicker for the Broncos, Brandon McManus. You got this world famous polo player. You got these famous Chinese actors who have like millions of followers on Twitter and other social media platforms and Instagram. And they're all buying apes and they're making the apes their PFP or their personal picture, their avatar. And, you know, it just builds more and more more of that kind of stuff. And we actually even saw recently in NASCAR, one of the NASCAR drivers took a cool cat, cool cat's a different project, little, you know, hmm. and uh, put it on his car. So you start building these kind of, and so when now, you know, when you release certain things, products and what have you, you know, you've got 
a potential, you know, you've got a reach of thousands of people right off the bat, right. you know, some who have real reach and real influence that, you know, are almost automatically built in as fans, followers, customers, or whatever. And, uh, you know, again, all around this idea of community and what the apes represent. And for everybody, it's a little bit different, but, you know, it's still this idea again, that we're all kind of bored apes we're in front of our computer. We're just click clack and like, and these things are kind of like, like, they're like us, you know? So, and then now you get to add another layer of sort of this, like, you know, whether it's commercialism, right? Because you can use them for branding and different things and different right. projects, or there's almost a fantastical kind of thing where it's like, you know, you got guys that are putting their apes in comics as like superheroes, you know? And the one dude was posting mm. like, I never thought, you know, I always wanted to be a superhero. Now, like now my apes in this comic. And it's like, <laughs> so it's just pretty wild, man. And then, you know, but when you look at it, the way domain investors would want to look at it, right? At the end of the day, it's like, look, all that stuff is cool and sounds great. And, and all that raw, raw stuff is great. But how am I going to make money? money? You know what I mean? Right. And I think that's where it's like, okay, well, let's talk about that. Because I mean, obviously, that's the key piece of it. So, you know, but when you step back and you look and you see, we're really super early, I think, in this NFT thing to begin with. And you know that you see all these companies, I mean, you see like, you know, Pepsi and different companies trying to figure out how to work the nft angle right because you know they've they've blown up and it's this idea that these these unique identifiers recorded in the blockchain unique digital assets if you will can be used for all these different kinds of things smart contracts you know they provide you with different rights special stuff like almost all music artists celebrities you know even products and things can use these in ways to now drive engagement and you know sell their products or sell these things themselves as nfts because so the board apes, for example, if you owned an ape about three weeks ago, they gifted everyone a dog, right? And they basically said, apes need companions in the yacht club or in the swamp or whatever, like you got to have a dog. So they basically just gave you a dog if you had an ape. Well, now the dogs are selling at a minimum of $5,000 each. So it was like, so if you had bought an ape back in the day, you may have bought one for a couple hundred dollars when they first came out. Now, all of a sudden, your ape's worth 15 grand. And your dog, you got a dog that's worth 5,000. I have a dog that's number six in rarity. He's like, you know, so literally a top 10, he's a radioactive looking dog. He's cool looking. I call him fallout boy or neon Sanders. You know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, so, but I've gotten offers up to like 15 grand for him. You know what I mean? And he was free. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, so there's no doubt that there is an opportunity if you can figure out, and we've said this, we see more and more domainers kind of dip in their toe. Um, you know, good, smart domainers who've made money in domains, really trying to figure out, you know, like sort of the key in domaining is buy low, sell high, right? right? So ultimately you're trying to buy assets, digital assets that you can get in and then figure out based on your time horizon, are you trying to flip quick? Are you trying to buy and hold? You know, what's your investment strategy? I mean, there's, it's, you approach it in a way that's very similar to domain names. And then the key is just like domains. And we say it all the time. It's like, look, if you're serious about domaining, do the DN Academy, man. Siger is the number one educator in the domain space. Like there are, go back. We've got years and years of domain Sherpa episodes. Right. It's all free. Just go listen to it and check it out. You know, we got folks up in Clubhouse helping to educate. And again, this goes back to what I was saying about the domain space. The domain space is one of the most welcoming like spaces where people are just like, it's like, hey, man, we're just happy new people are coming in, man. Let us help <laughs> you. You know what I mean? Let us share right. with you. I've told this story before. When we first acquired register.com and then we ended up acquiring, uh, meaning web.com acquired network solutions a year later. You know, I went to one of the, it was a registrar summit that GoDaddy used to host out in Scottsdale. And, uh, you know, and they'd have all the registrars come out and kind of do their thing and just kind of connect and talk through different things that were impactful, you know, kind of like a registrar stakeholder group meeting, you know. And I remember we were having some issues like I was in, you know, we were in the role a couple of months trying to deal with uh, UDRP complaints and, you know, or, or ICANN complaints or something like that. And I was like, you know, I asked somebody at the table, I was like, hey, how do you guys deal with this particular thing? And, uh, you know, hmm. expecting maybe they give me a little feedback, whatever, you know. And, you know, all of a sudden, like the whole table is like, oh, here's how we did it. You know, and they start breaking down, like how they deal with this particular issue. And I'm like, you know, these guys are like competitors, but they're being so, you know, like forthcoming about this information. I felt like, you know, like uh, Joe Pesci and my cousin Vinny, when he says, hey, can you me your files? And he's like, here's all my files. And he's like, what are you talking about? Oh, my God. And, you know, and Marissa Tomei is like, it's discovery, you idiot. They've got to give it to you. But in this case, they're not compelled other than than just doing it as a way to be, you know, helpful and kind of this coopetition kind of thing that 
really you see all the way from the registries to the registrars all the way to individual domainers, you know? And uh, so I think that is like a really cool kind of aspect of, uh, you know, of domaining and, and, and you see that too in these other digital asset spaces, people are just like, there's a huge sense of community. I think the fact that we've been, you know, so isolated for the, over the course of the past year and everything with COVID too, people, you know, these are ways for people to connect more people are working remotely than ever before. You know, even now where people are getting back to the office and doing all their thing, people are still distributed, you know, they're still remote. So, you know, this is one of those things that a lot gives people a sense of community and belonging, but ties it to, you know, there's a gamification of it. You know, we all love, like, you know, we all grew up on video games and, uh, you know, so there's some of that. And then also too, it's like, goes back to what I was just talking about, which is there's a real opportunity to make money. If you, you know, if that is what your ultimate goal is, you know, right. And, uh, for me, I'm almost too attached to my apes. You know what I mean? Cause I get off. <laughs> of, I mean, I'm like, I don't know, man, I feel like I feel bad. letting them go. You know what I mean? They're my, they're like my, they're my fam. Right. Well, you don't want to let them go. And let's say you had, you let one go at, uh, you know, 15,000 that you got early on and yeah, you made some money, but then you find out that, you know, two years, three years down the road, that 15,000 turns into, let's say 150,000, just speculate. Oh, yeah. And no, no, without, there you are yeah. like kicking yourself in the tail going, dang, I should have <laughs> held it. I, I, exactly. You know, well. Not knowing. Yeah. And I think that's a big part of it. Cause, and we're also not sure. I mean, it could go away tomorrow, you know, but I think that's where it's also important for folks to do their research. And when you say, well, okay, well, what is the, uh, you know, what's the research that, you know, you need to do? Where do you go? Like, how do you find out this information? And, you know, it's kind of like the early days of domains. I mean, you really just got to hone in on like, you know, try to, you've got to follow on social media. You know, Twitter is a great resource for this stuff. Uh, there are plenty of discord channels around each one of these projects. You know, you've got some folks that are blogging, some folks podcasting, you know, and it's, you almost need your own like kind of team of people or at least stuff that you trust to kind of figure out, okay, where, you know, what's the best way to kind of get in. And some of it is just, and then you just got to get in and do it. You know, there are technical sort of barriers, if you will, like to understand how like the wallets work, how right. the different platforms work. And when, uh, like, for example, like when crypto had a, the big wave in like 17, 2017 and everything, when, when there was that, you know, call it the initial big run up or, you know, that really put it on the the map for a lot of people, you know, even then I was, you know, still pretty new to that. And, and it was hard for me to even get set up with accounts and make sure like, okay, if I want to buy, okay, it was easy enough to buy Bitcoin, but you know, there were these other coins that I wanted to buy, but I didn't even like, how do you buy those? Like, you know, mm -hmm. like it was a Coinbase only had like three coins at that time or whatever it was, you know? And so some of this, and I do think this is all kind of the wave of the future, where we end up, I don't know. I, it feels like the early days of the internet in some ways. So, you know, things are obviously going to evolve, change. You're going to have new right. applications and different platforms and services and things that are going to become sort of part of this whole ecosystem. But I do think that because it's all kind of technical and, and you know, I think it's important to just get an understanding of how this stuff works to the extent that you're going to get involved. Right. You know, right. But I right. think if you're putting your head in the sand, it is, it does feel like kind of like, okay, you know, you're one of those people back in the day that were like electronic mail. No way. Ain't no way. Anything's going to take over from faxing <laughs> in the post office. You know what I mean? Cause like where this is the new wave now, whether it's a fad, I, I think certain things will definitely not have staying power. There's no doubt. I'd say 90% of these, these NFT projects right now, especially because after the crypto punks and the apes came out, there were literally hundreds of other ones after that. And, you know, so the idea that all of them are going to retain some value, I think is, is, you know, is, is, uh, you know, is wrong, is not, is not right, is incorrect. I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be almost like more are going to, you know, without question, more will fail than succeed. Um, so I, I would also advise people just, you know, same kind of thing with domains. Like, you know, you gotta be careful. You gotta do your research. You gotta, you know, be smart with your decisions. You know, there may be, there's some risk taking involved, like any investing, but you know, I do think we're early enough and, you know, there's folks like Gary V and some really important influencers who I think have their pulse on it pretty well. I mean, Gary V has his V friends, NFTs, and those have been successful. And, you know, and he, uh, you know, he, he, we talked about this on the podcast, um, recently, um, was also, he, had, there was some video from him a couple of years ago where he was talking about how he thought crypto and NFTs were the future. And he was talking about how, when he, he holds up his Nike shoe, he's like, I wear Nikes. Cause I want people to know that this is like what, what I'm about, right? Like this is part of my brand and you know, what I like. 
people like when they would walk down the street with a boom box playing the music because they want people to know what you're listening to. Right. Like, let me put you on to some stuff. Let me let you know that I'm hip and I want y'all to, to see, see that, hear that. Right. Well, these avatars allow, they're kind of like a digital flex, right? So mm -hmm. it's now like, hey, I'm showing you that I'm down with, with the apes. You know, I've got apes, which means I can, I can afford to buy an ape. Right. I'm like, I'm ahead of the curve with these things. Like, you know, and I will admit for me, what, like looking at the Alan Dunn's and Josh and Shane and Morgan Linden and a bunch of other people and some other folks, even not in the domain space, but like Daryl Morey, who's the GM of the 76ers, who's also a pretty tech forward kind of guy, Mark Cuban, just seeing people like, you know, who, you know, from the outside looking in, it was like, there was FOMO, you know, the fear of missing out. I was like, yo, I gotta, I want to be, I want to be down with this. Like what, what's the deal? But I, I think we're so early that so many people don't really know what's up that it's only become more and more of a thing. But there's no doubt that, again, more people are remote than ever before. More people are digital than ever before. Your digital identity, you know, your digital brand, you know, are more important than ever before. And these things, just like NFT, something as simple as being able to include one of them as your avatar is something that, you know, is in some ways that's, you know, talk about, you know, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. This is how people are, who don't know you or even people who do know you are kind of seeing what you're about, you know? Right. And uh, so it's like there's an extra value in that as well. And again, you're honing back on as an investor, you know, what are the smart choices to make for my money? And that's where it's like, you know, trying to understand how some of these projects work. You've got these drops where if you own one, you get gifted these other ones, figuring out how to mint them like so that, you know, you can get in on a project. Sometimes the obviously the earlier, the better. How do you find out about the projects ahead of time to know which ones to try to tackle and go after, which artwork makes sense, which platforms, which cryptocurrency, like all this kind of stuff. And, you know, again, I mean, you're just sort of sourcing all of that knowledge from places like where you can get it. And, uh, you know, and we're kind of doing that same thing. And again, we're not necessarily saying we're experts, but we're more than happy to share what has worked, what hasn't worked, what we're into, what we're not into. And, you know, and that's even part of what we're talking about right now. You know? Right. So let me ask you this then, because it, one interesting thought that just occurred to me is obviously we've seen just the the I guess the the rise and uptick in terms of blockchain, uh, crypto, Ethereum. And now you're seeing, you know, digital assets, NFTs and so forth. Now, for those that don't necessarily get involved, so they're not going to get involved purchasing NFTs. But then there is this other lane. And I've seen it occur from time after time. So with blockchain. Uh, there mm -hmm. were many folks who got involved in blockchain, but then there was a subset of domain investors that invested in blockchain names. So anything yeah, that had a chain, anything that had block in it, same thing with crypto. Um, yep. Now, are you seeing the same thing with NFTs? Yep. hundred percent. And uh, like, a, you know, so we've sold some of the biggest names we've sold this year have either been crypto or NFT really. I mean, we sold NFT.com, you know I mean? So, and that was a huge sale for us. Um, and, uh, you know, so, and I think that at a minimum for domainers, I think that is where, even if you aren't going to buy NFTs, cause you say, look, man, apes 15 grand for a, a JPEG of a digital ape, not my thing. I don't really <laughs> care, but I think you've got to be aware of like, if you get to a point that, you know, you know, how it impacts the domain space, I think you'd be negligent not to at least understand because it's just like anything where you've got trends that are going to drive either increases or decreases in the value of certain types of domains. You've got to like, you know, you need to know because, you know, G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. In this case, knowing <laughs> is almost the whole battle, right? Because right. it's like to understand like, okay, and I don't know if there's an angle necessarily for board apes with NFTs, but there's, I mean, for, with domain names, but there's no doubt that the NFT space in general is driving a huge, huge uptick. And not only, not only with what might be interesting for people, you know, who are into NFTs, but, you know, a lot of our clients are startups, right? They, and, and especially a lot of crypto startups and the types of domains that they need and want and are targeting, you know, it's important to understand what their business is. We say on Domain Sherpa, all roads lead to domains, but domains also re lead to everything, right? So, and this was a point I was going to make before I went on my wild tangent, one of my <laughs> tangents earlier, but it's the thing I love about domains, man. It's like, it kind of makes you have to be somewhat of an expert in everything, you know? And right. I think that's one of the things that I find most impressive in talking to Drew on a daily basis is how much dude knows about everything, you know? And it's like, <laughs> like, you know, and, and, you know, and he'll tell you, he knows everything about everything, man, you know, but um, <laughs> well, of course he will. He's true. <laughs> 
you know, but being intellectually curious and, un, you know, and curious about just things out there in the world, both finance, you know, not just finance, but also just, you know, like, again, current events and things that are impacting people really help people in the domain space figure out like, you know, which domains to target, who to target as, as prospects for either buying or selling domains, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, and you only get ahead of the curve by really being aware of what's going on out there in the world, because domains are so reflective of the world and world commerce and e-commerce mm. in general, you know? So, so yeah, so I think to your point, I think it's a great one. And I would agree a hundred percent, which is, you know, even if you aren't going to buy NFTs, you really should be hip to what's going on because it's just another trend that is really impactful at the moment, which really has a big impact on not just the world, but domain names, especially. Right. And speaking of trends, I mean, and just to comment about, you know, knowing a, a bit of everything, it's like I was reading your bio and I was like, dang, JT is like a generalist to, <laughs> to the nth degree. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so like, Take us back. Like, how in the world did you even because I think you started out in law before yeah, yeah. even yeah. Internet. So, I mean, yeah. was that your whole goal? Hey, I'm going to become uh, yeah. I'm going to have something to do with legal or become. An yeah, attorney? yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no. And, and so going back. So when I so I did my undergrad at Villanova, uh, you know, from the ah, Northeast. Series, no like, wonder. So. Yeah, that's where you'll get all that Villanova stuff. In fact, on Sherpa recently, I, I interviewed Chris Jenkins who hit the shot for, uh, to win the 2016 oh, yeah. national championship. And, uh, which was like a bucket list thing for me. That goes, that's another area of, <laughs> of Sherpa too. It's like the Sherpa sports. Like how do we tie some of that? Because now you're having all these platforms that are coming along doing digital collectibles. And that was right. really the thrust of my contact with Chris and my conversation with Chris. And I've been talking to his team a little bit since then, you know, about how does he monetize the fact that he effectively owns this like special iconic moment. And now they're trying to, you know, digitize all of that now in ways that wow. they never have before. So, so that's a really kind of, so how do you tie that, you know, and then sports and you got these esports leagues and there's a whole lot of other stuff that's really happening in and around that. That's really cool. And, you know, trying to, trying to give a little bit of shine to that through Sherpa without again, moving too far away from our core mission. But yeah, so for me, so went to Villanova, uh, you know, I used to do a rap thing back in the day. I know we talked about this a little bit. And uh, so, you know, I was part of this hip hop group, you know, we opened up for Naughty by Nature, Sugar Hill Gang, Wu-Tang Clan, um, little Wayne. Yeah, man, we did some things. When, when, hold on. When was this? <laughs> so this was back then. This was back in like the late nineties was kind of was, you know, cause I grew up like the late 1900s. <laughs> yeah, well, now that's what it feels like. Right. It's like back in medieval times, you know what I'm saying? Like we jousted and rapped, but, um, you know, on cassette. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Tapes. They're like what, you know, um, exact kids nowadays, man, they don't know what any of that stuff is. But um, yeah, man. So, you know, I grew up listening to hip hop, loved it. You know, I grew up in the Northeast, East Coast, you know, rap, cypher, freestyle, all that kind of stuff. My stepbrother, who, you know, was uh, a little bit older than me, was like kind of into that scene. And like, you know, my man Dorian put me onto some of that stuff. And so we, you know, we used to just make music and all that. So we did that for a while. And again, did some, did some things and put out some albums. And the most recent album we put out, it was in 2011. And if I haven't shared this with you, I'll send you the link. But it's called Game 7. And uh, it's my boy Gino and I. And uh, so we put that album out. It's 10 years old now, which is crazy because it's literally just past like the 10 year anniversary. And if we were actually big artists, wild. we would put out like a, a, we would put out a special uh, 10 year, you know, <laughs> album or whatever. But, um, but yeah, and then that was part of when we did like the Little Wayne show, opened up for Asher Roth and a couple other folks too. And, wow. um, you know, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, we opened up for the uh, Carrie Hilson. Uh, Oh, the dudes who did the G6 song. I forget that, you know, fly like a G6. You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we opened up for them at this wow. show. And uh, so music was like my thing. When I finished college, I actually, that was what I wanted to do. I had management. My legal people was uh, my boy, Randy Cutler, Cutler and Settlemeyer. They were the same people who handed Eminem's legal stuff. You know, we were uh, talking a bunch of different labels, putting out demos, like just doing a whole lot of that. That is and wild. Then, yeah, yeah, it was crazy, you know, but then it was like, you know, it didn't happen fast. And I think for me, it was kind of like, you know, I didn't need rap to live. Right. So it wasn't like I was coming out of the hood, like a lot of other artists and folks, especially around that time. And, you know, so where street cred really, really mattered and a lot of that. And like, you know, but I mean, I did like a, a hip hop showcase thing at the in New York at some club and won that. You know, and it was like, you know, got studio time. I mean, you know, so we had like, we were vibing, we were doing some cool things. And, 
having a lot of fun with it. Um, but then as I kind of, you know, I'm out of school, I'm like living in New York, I'm, you know, kind of doing the rap thing. It's not making me really any real money. And then I'm like, all right, well, you know, I need to do something, you know, and I actually, so my first job out of college while I was doing the hip hop thing, I was actually working for Christie's auction house. So now watching Christie's do all, and not to mention, you know, having run name jet for a while, like the auction thing. So, right. but then I was bartending in Manhattan, you know, it, uh, and working on music, doing all that. Um, and thought, you know what? I let me try to do the school thing a little bit to give me a little bit more runway and a little bit of something at sort of a light at the end of the tunnel as an alternative, you know, if this thing doesn't really work, you know, and, and we had things popping again, we were talking to a bunch of different labels. Um, we had some really cool things going on, but then it's different. You know, I, I saw a side of the music business then that as an artist wasn't awesome, but I thought, you know what, I'll, right. I'll do the law school thing. I'll be an entertainment lawyer. So it's like a natural fit and it'll be, so I took the LSAT. I did really well in like the 96 percentile not that i'm bragging or that i remember exactly what my score was but i'm just saying <laughs> it's up there and uh so you know went to school in new york went to brooklyn law you know they offered me a decent amount of scholarship money to do that so you know i thought all right cool i'll be right here doing my thing but then you know a year into law school i realized like i thought law school and it, it, ignorantly so i thought man it's you know naively so i'm like yo it's gonna be chill it'll be like undergrad where i partied and hung out and kind of have plenty of time <laughs> to make music well, it was not that. So a year in, I'm like, I got a bad G my GPA is not great. <laughs> and I got to dial this in if I really want to make something happen. So, you know, I then had to really kind of shift my focus, sort of a growing up kind of come to Jesus moment. At the same time, I had spent my first semester or my first summer between first and second year of law school working for um, Subverse Records, which was an independent hip hop, Black Alicious, MF Doom, that kind of stuff. That was cool. But, you know, again, it was sort of more of like the you know, stuff about the music business that I was like, yeah, it's cool. But the, you know, I, I love the art. I didn't love the business of it. You know what uh, I mean? Uh, right. And right. Uh, it took some of the, you know, it's sort of the romanticizing of it, you know, the, the polish kind of comes off, you know? Right. And uh, so in between second and third year law school, I had an opportunity, I had a choice to make. I was either going to, you know, we were, I was going to do an internship at Def Jam, which was unpaid, or I was going to work for Bloomberg LP, like the actual finance company working oh. on their legal product making a bunch of money, you know? And I was like, well, I'm going to go, I got to, I got to pay the bills. You know what I mean? <laughs> this rent is paying itself. And I was like, at that point, I was kind of like, look, you know, and I put it together some music. And I mean, I, I put an album out right after law school. So anyway, so I did that, focused on that. And that kind of became my shift. And then when I did the, the Bloomberg thing, you know, then I was able to actually take a lot of the IP, trademark, copyright classes, you know, and realize like, oh, there's a real like world application here, you know, in e-commerce, right? And that was starting to be kind of the shift for me to recognize that. And then when I got out of law school, I went to work for a firm in New Jersey, took on a client called Solid Cactus, which was an e-commerce company. And I brought them on board uh, uh -huh. through some connects and, and, you know, and they were developing and designing Yahoo stores actually on the Yahoo store platform. And then, uh, then they got sick of paying me by the hour and brought me on full time. Uh -huh. So, and that was in 2006. And then, you know, I did that. So I was their general counsel. They were like an up and coming company. And then, you know, the bubble kind of popped on the, uh, you know, on the, on, on the dot com. And, you know, I don't, uh, you know, whatever it was like at that point, I know we hit a bit of a rough patch. Right. But, you know, things slowed down, but it was still like, you know, the path. And then we ended up getting bought by web, you know, so it was like, you know, that was a really good opportunity for those guys. So they sold. And then once that happened, segued into web.com in 2009. And then, uh, so, you know, at that point I was like a full fledged lawyer, you know, went back, moved back to Pennsylvania. That's where Saw Cactus was based out of. That's where I connected with Gino who used to sneak into my shows back in the day when I was, doing <laughs> and, you know, himself, it turned into a really talented artist. And, uh, he was like, yo, we should do like, you know, let's, let's do a project. And that was the game seven album, which is ah. in my opinion, you know, my favorite work that I put together musically was the stuff that Gino and I did on the game seven album. And uh, I'll send you a link that's on, and you can find the game seven thing on Apple music or on Spotify, like all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, so, but you got to make sure it's the right one. You know what I mean? Because there's a couple <laughs> other game sevens. One of my buddies went to like, uh, he went, you know, went to, he does cryotherapy. This is my man, Patrick. It's a pretty funny story. So he goes to cryotherapy. They're like, Hey, you can play any music you want. And they're like, he's like, Oh, play game seven. That's my boy. So, <laughs> but it was like street hip hop. It was not me. And like starts blasting while he's in there. And you know, you got these like girls, like he's walking, they're like, that's your buddy. <laughs> you know, like, not exactly, you know, talking about trapping and everything else. But, um, 
And, uh, you know, cause our thing is more like, you know, we're more musically like, you know, we had some really, uh, so production wise, I had my boy ill mind do a track on the game seven album. Ill mind has now gone on to win Grammys. He's produced for Beyonce, Kanye, like he's, he's the real, real deal. You could check him out at illmind.biz. He's like legit, legit. And, uh, you know, I've been working with him forever. And then, uh, you know, we had some other, uh, there was a, a band from, from Pennsylvania that we were cool with called breaking benjamin they're like a multi-platinum recording act and so their bassist was in the lab with us doing some stuff we had some djs and different people we had some girl like uh you know female vocalists singing on some tracks and you know so we're kind of like uh you know so it was definitely you know really really happy with the way that album turned out man it was was a lot of fun we still listen to my kids listen to it and uh you know they're friends and they know all the words and all that kind of stuff so it's pretty wild although they need me to they they need me to do a uh clean version of well not so much anymore because my kids are kind of past that now and uh my wife would be like oh that's because they listen to your music i'm like no they're watching enough youtube and other stuff it's not just me but yeah man you know so we had a blast like and you know some incredible memories i mean we did shows I mean, I, they flew me out one time back before ESPN had the ESPYs. They had the ESPN Sports and Action Awards or whatever it was. Flew me and a couple of my people out there one year to do uh, to perform at the after party. We opened up for Dilated Peoples at the after party at the Knitting Factory. I think it was the Knitting Factory in L.A. And then, uh, you know, we did uh, Electric Factory in Philly. Like we, you know, I mean, New York, China Club, uh, a bunch of other spots that we recorded at New York. I mean, that we performed at New York, Pittsburgh. Jersey. I mean, like, you know, all over the place, just kind of doing a lot of that stuff. And uh, so, yeah, man, I mean, great memories, a lot of fun, you know, but I think some of being comfortable in front of the mic, then that parlayed for me into the domain Sherpa thing. I did the freestyle on Sherpa. That's kind of where the ability to be able to do this thing with the apes, you know, so with the Zootang clan, the, uh, you know, that's kind of where it comes from, right? It comes from a place of like, we love music. Uh, you know, Drew is another one who like just loves music, man. He impresses me when we talk about music and stuff because he's got a pretty wide range. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, everything from reggae to like you know, deep, you know, blue swamp blues and stuff and like stuff that I'm not even hip to, you know, and, uh, you know, and I kind of like fashion myself as somebody who knows a decent amount about music. So. And, uh, you know, and I've actually got to do some legal stuff for some of those folks that I was mentioning, like where I've you know worked on contracts with some big, right. you know, big things and done some things. So I did, you know, I was able to kind of parlay some of the, and had I wanted to stay in the music business, I could have done that, but, you know, everything kind of went the path that it did. And I really did really enjoy, and I love like the work now that I do and, you know, everything, you know, and introducing me to domain. So then in 2010, you know, web bought register.com 2011 web buys network solutions as part of the network solutions acquisition, it acquires 50% ownership in Namejet. So at that point, you know, originally Namejet was a joint venture between network solutions and Enom. So at that point, then it became web.com and Enom. And then, uh, you know, so I became the lawyer because we were responsible for the legal function for the Namejet business. So I became the lawyer for Namejet for a few years. And then when Matt Overman, who's my, who's our, our, our boy, right. Great. Moved over to run all of sales for, that was when Enom spun out right side, uh, to do the new GTLDs. Correct. Overman went to run sales for right side. I then stepped in, in the role of GM for Namejet. And I did that for about five years. And that's where you and I got to know each other. I mean, that's how I got to know a lot of the people in the space. So prior to that, I really knew a lot of the ICANN, the compliance folks, you know, right. but then I went from being more of an ICANN guy to a Namescon guy is kind of how I say it. Because, you know, it became more like getting, you know, then it was business development, working with the domainers and, uh, you know, domain investors and then, you know, buyers, sellers, registrars, like at that level. Yeah, I mean, and, and the Namejet gig was a blast, man. I mean, we had, I had a great team. You know, the companies were really good and supportive and I reported to a board of directors. So they kind of gave me space to just sort of do my thing. You know, the thing that would crack me up though, people would like, you know, we deal with, you know, people would get sort of, you know fired up at us about different, I think they always thought we we're like this bigger company than we were, you know? And I'm like, we're just a small little group, man, just trying to do our best out here, like building this platform that at the time when we were trying to grow it for domain list, uh, for like direct listers, you know, the, before I stepped in, you know, we had a handful of like sort of big direct listers, but we opened up the program a lot more, but trying to make the platform work in, in ways that it wasn't really originally mm. intended wasn't always the easiest, but we had great developers who were, you know, always good working on the fly, making things happen to the seller dashboard, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, the years running Namejet for me were, were, were great, you know, cause I left the legal world 
and entered into more of the operational sort of business management side. I got my MBA around that same time. I actually got my U. I went to University of Florida for the MBA. So that's why I root for the Gators on Saturdays. You know what I mean? And uh, uh, oh, you're Texas boys. Everybody's coming to the SEC now, man. What's up with well, that? Well, well, well. Yeah, I guess. I mean, hey. Texas A&M thought they were going to get rid of us. I guess not. <laughs> I, I feel bad for not. Texas Tech, man. They can't get left behind, man. They got to come too, man. It's all good. But um, you put know, them all in one. Let's see what happens. Uh, well, and it's at some point, it's almost like that's what you should do. If anybody right. they can compete at that high level, like put them in the put them in the mix because you know the BCS you know was was not a great system. I think that the playoff no. is the playoff is much better, but I think you need more teams to make sure you don't miss teams. You know, right. And this is probably more of a Sherpa sports. This is the thing. I, you know, I don't want to get us too far <laughs> off the path. But uh, you know, I think that eight teams would be pretty would would capture everybody that really has a legit shot of winning, winning, you know. But right. Uh, anyway, but yeah, it'll be and, interesting. And, and the, but there's a but there's a business side to it. Like there is this sports side, but I also say there is a business, there is a numbers of money side of yeah, 100%. teams getting involved in and who brings what viewership and yeah, what revenue. That. I mean, so, the money talks, man. Well, yeah. and that's why I think the NIL thing where they passed, you know, where they you know, allowing college athletes to benefit from their likeness. I think it's going to bring some negative aspects, but man, Hey, look, you guys have been for lack of a better word, pimping these college kids forever, man. Like let them get paid. Listen, you know? and I've always so. said this and I've gotten in trouble for it, but I, I still stand by it. I said to me, um, college sports is primarily football. I said it was really, I look at it and it's almost a sim- a resemblance to slavery. Yeah. To a certain extent. And no, a lot no. of people are like BS. And, you know, everybody catches feelings about it. I'm like, listen, it, yes, I, I get what you're saying. But at the same time, I'm going, no, look at this. You're yeah. you're using no, they, you're getting all these jerseys. You're getting everything. Um, millions from- of dollars, man, off the backs of these kids. And they're yeah. like, oh, well, they get a free education. And it's like, look, I get that. But you're not bringing them in to get an education. You're just saying, hey, while you're here, maybe go jump in on a class or two. You know what right. I'm saying? Come on. Room and board in a dorm and they're bringing yeah. you millions of dollars. I mean, yeah. maybe if you're talking about like the track and field or like folks that don't generate revenue. But all I'm saying is, look, at some point, what you're providing them in value is not even close to what they're providing you in value. Right. And totally. therefore, you've got to ha- you've got to level the playing field and allow the folks who have an ability and and honestly, like, you know, should be able to profit off the, you know, some, in some cases, this is the prime of their athletic careers, right? right. So let them live and, and, and benefit and eat from that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when I heard it was a Dabo Sweeney from the coach of Clemson saying, if they let kids get paid, you know, um, you know, I don't know, that's going to, I might, I might have to stop coaching. I'm like, dude, you get paid a like hundred million dollars or whatever. Exactly. Bye. Bye. Like, <laughs> Peace out. You know what I'm saying? I lost so much respect for dude because I'm like, I get it that it might make your life a little difficult that all of a sudden you're going to have players that are actually going to be getting paid and maybe they won't have to be so yes to you. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Like, but at the same time, like, it, uh, peace out, dude, you know, because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, these kids are risking their, you know, their health, you know, this is, and they're working so hard and they're doing what they're doing. And if they're bringing in that money, then they should be able to, 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 you know, get some of it. Period. Definitely. It's simple as that. It, well, and if it if it were if it were the same way for coaches, he would be the main yeah. one crying, likely. Yeah. Hey, I mean, Dabo, you want to get a master's degree? Well, just you know, that'll be for free. You won't get right. paid. But you can go take some courses over at the uh, over at the grad school building. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Here, you can stay in the dorm. Bring your family and stay in the dorm, <laughs> homie. You know what I mean? Like come free on. meals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yo, Chow line. Uh, you know. <laughs> It's the kind of thing where, look, if you can't be aware, it's almost like this. Then let's, I'll bring it back to, to domains in our space and everything else. You have to be aware. You have to understand the facts, right? You have yeah. to understand because if, if you're working off of bad facts and everything's emotion and you're not really talking about the actual truth of things, you're right. going to miss, you know, what really, what really matters. And, you know, that means it's domain, it's everything, right? You know, we are not that far removed. And, you know, that needs to be considered when you look at the way that some of these, things and systems and, and, and other stuff are. And yeah, man, I mean, and look, when you look at the way college athletics goes again, and, and then that, now we're breaking it down to dollars and cents, man, these athletes right. are bringing in a lot of this money. 
you know, and, and you cannot look past when you talk about the, the sports that generate the most revenue for these universities. You're talking about football. You're talking about basketball. You can't ignore the fact the demographics of the players and what that looks like compared to, you know, and, and, and how. So when you talk about parallels and all that, like there's, you know, there's too much there to just act like now nah, it's cool as it is. Right. It's not rock the boat. Because, you know, it's wrong from, a, you know, from how we treat people, you know, whether it's race or, you know, economics. It's right. just, you know, that's why I think, but look, to the credit, like the NIL, like that is all now shifting in the right direction. So, totally. you know, these are, these totally. are good things. You know, there's going to be, there's going to be hiccups and things that might not all be smooth and great. Like, you know, there will be influence on these athletes and things where they're, you know, and I do feel bad. Even I talked to Chris Jenkins on the show about this saying how, you know, recruiting is starting at these kids, you know, now like at, you know, 12 years old, right. 13 right. years old, but, you know, but that's been, I mean, LeBron was on sports illustrated as like 14 year old or whatever. So, but now even more of these kids, but you know, so they're just going to have to be kind of about their business and hopefully they can get some decent guidance. You have athletes that, you know, have been through it. You know, some of these old heads who hopefully now can kind of get involved with some of these younger athletes to help give them some guidance. You hope that coaches and parents kind of do their job. I mean, it takes a village and, uh, you know, but I think overall, like it's definitely a, you know, a move in the right direction and, uh, you know, it'll shake the system up in a good way. So we'll see. Oh, totally. But, uh, totally. Uh, and, I, and I agree. I think that it, it's a matter of if you look at yesterday, if you were even say, hey, rewind the clock 60 years ago. Right. Um, and you go, well, hey, we are better than where we were. OK, great. Give you that. But then at some point we become history. Like yeah. uh, this time period. 60 years from now, they'll look back and go, man, what in the world were they doing back then? <laughs> um, it, it, I yeah. mean, come on, guys. Can't you see it? It's it, it's yeah. pretty clear to us. Let's change. Yeah. Let's change it. So it's it's one of those things. A lot of people will say, hey, shut up. It's better than what it was. And it's like, yeah, until you become history and then you yeah. really see how bad it was. Uh, yeah. it, and like you said, I, I totally agree in terms of keep moving the ball down the proverbial ball down the field and making yeah. it better uh for all um yeah. you know not not just me my four and no more as i often say um, <laughs> yeah. because that is no, the I mentality think... that's an easy mentality to get into of yeah. well as long as me and my four and no more are good hey you know call it a day it's like yeah. well no there are other there are other people that are impacted um, by these decisions, whether I make a decision or not, people are impacted. Um, and so I just want to do what's good for the greater good. Yeah. No, and I think that's a great way of putting it, man. And, uh, you know, we've got four as well, five, if you count the dog, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, my four, no more, I think it's important, <laughs> you know, we try to, you know, and it's, it's not always easy, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, um, but, you know, I think that that's why I think going back to what I said about the domain space and also to try to tie it back. I mean, you've got a lot of really, you know, the domain space represents a really cool sort of like collection of people from all over the place. So many different like walks of life, like the fact that you've got individual domainers who can buy a domain for ten dollars to publicly traded companies with enormous portfolios and huge services that provide the backbone of the industry, you know, and that we all sort of interact and you've got international folks and you know, people from every state and almost every country and every continent and like, you know, all interacting and being able to do business online where, you know, Bitcoin and the digital dollars and everything else and, you know, and domain names, domain names don't care necessarily. Domains don't care what, you know, the color of your skin, you know what I'm saying? So now it doesn't mean everyone has equal opportunity based on all the, some of the stuff that we're talking about, but, you know, domains in their, their rare, you know, sort of their baseline form in the space in general create a really cool playing field for everybody to participate and, uh, you know, and interact. And I do think that that, you know, and then the fact that you layer on top of that sort of this general community sense and feeling like one of the things that I just love about domains, you know, and, uh, you know, also the fact that again, they're universal tied to everything, every business, whether you're Apple or whether you're, you know, the, the mom and pop bake shop down the street, you know, really needs a website and, uh, you know, and ultimately needs a domain name. And the fact that you've got all these other uses now, you know, you've got even domains that, you know, XYZs that can operate as your Ethereum wallet. You know, I mean, there's more and more stuff that's happening that are creating like really cool, cool things in the space. And I can tell you for me, like I went back. So this is, <laughs> we got off on that tangent as I was telling about my history and my story. Right. Um, so, you know, ran Namejet for those five years. And then in that time frame, um, two cows bought Enom, which then meant you had web.com and two cows now is the joint venture partners in 
uh, Namejet. And then once Web got bought, uh, they went from public to private and got bought by a private equity firm called Cirrus Capital based in New York. Um, once that happened, they kind of decided, hey, like we're pretty far removed from the original folks that put this thing together. Um, you know, two cows wanted to move their expiring inventory over to GoDaddy, or at least that was on the radar. And it was kind of like, hey, guys, like, why don't we, you know, kind of make this move? Web decides to effectively buy out two cows and then bring Namejet back under the web doc, or not back, but fully under the web.com umbrella. I went on, you know, I took a VP role with Web, helped the integration. That was part of my deal with them. Once that was done, you know, was kind of deciding what to do. I segued actually back into legal as our, mm -hmm. uh, as associate general counsel. And, uh, and, and chief privacy officer at web. And I did that for a year. And then during that time was a lot of soul searching for me, actually kind of in the, the year, even prior to that during the integration, cause it was like, what's next Went back to legal working for the general counsel at web.com, a guy by the name of Jeff Neese, who's a good friend of mine and a super, super great lawyer, great guy, went to work for Jeff for a year. Um, after that year, co you know, COVID happened during that time. Right. Um, you know, so we all went home basically and worked from home. You know, during that time, I had some pretty, you know, good conversations with Drew. Drew and I had always kind of talked a little bit about, hey, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, we should do some stuff together, whatever, whatever, try to figure out like, you know, you know, do you need some help? Like, you know, we, you know, whatever, you know, and, and, and then once, you know, sort of all this kind of culminated, you know, Drew was like, look, I want to try to grow my business, but I have to be the guy like doing everything like, you know, from a, from an operation standpoint, mm -hmm. financials, you know, I mean, Drew's just wants to be Drew, man. He wants to be jumping on podcasts like this one and buying and selling domain names and, you know, buying it's coming, Drew, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, exactly. And, uh, so yeah, so, you know, it was one of those things. It was like, Hey man, now might be the time. And, uh, you know, so that was pretty much it. I had a couple other things I was working on too that, you know, so it was sort of like, all right, cool. Um, we had this product thing that we're working on that, uh, you know, that's taking a little longer, man, all things kind of take longer sometimes <laughs> than you think, but it was like, yo, you know, timing wise, this makes sense. Let's make the jump. And, uh, so did that. And then this, so that's how I ended up with media options, you know, so Drew was like, all right, I'd like you to you know, come on be my lawyer and my ops guy. Um, so, I, you know, so that's what we did. Uh, at the same time, we announced the integration that we've got working with Dan.com, which is really cool. Uh, we've got a couple other things in the works right now that are really, really neat. I uh, can't disclose those, but, um, Come on! announcements coming, man, announcements coming. And in the meantime, too, you know, the space has been, you know, uh, we say it a lot, like with everything that happened with COVID, we were blessed and lucky that, you know, at least for us, you know, we were in a space that actually thrived under COVID because, you know, digital assets, you know, people recognize that, you know, your website, your domain names, all of that kind of stuff mattered a lot more. Crypto did its thing in the meantime. You know, and uh, so, you know, over the course of this past almost year, you know, we've had a ton of really big wins, uh, you know, a ton of a lot of fun. And for me, you know, I enjoyed running a business more than I enjoyed being just a lawyer. Um, and, you know, coming on board with Drew in the, in the role of media options was was very much bringing me back to what it was about Namejet that, you know, my and running Namejet that I really liked and, and you know, working with a small group of people, you know, that were all kind of focused, trying to, you know, all rowing in the same direction. It wasn't like a big company with any of the bureaucratic kind of stuff and the politics. And it was just, you know, but yet with a really, with a lot of upside, you know, a lot of opportunity to do some really, really cool stuff and have fun in the process. And that's the thing we say, we, you know, we do well, we do very well. We have a lot of fun in, as we're doing it. And, uh, you know, we've got a great, great group, you know, because, uh, you know, we're not huge, but, you know, we've got a couple of folks and some of the best in the biz, you know, between Drew and we've got Chris Zyker, who's our you know lead broker now, who uh, does a lot of the stuff that Drew used to do. Um, and uh, Chris is one of the best in the biz now. And, uh, you know, and it's really, really awesome, like working with him, you know, and uh, and then we've got a few other folks that are involved with different pieces of the business that, uh, you know, from a tech standpoint, from a marketing standpoint and everything else. And we just keep trying to like keep growing and, you know, we redesigned the website and put that out over the last couple of months. And yeah, saw before. looks yeah, man, great. So got all the Sherpa stuff that we're doing. So, yeah, man. So that's pretty much my history. You know, it all started back, you know, back in Villanova and then, you know, all the way to little rap, little, you know, little this law. This man was spitting you know? bars, <laughs> working in the bar, past yeah. the bar. <laughs> yeah. Set the bar in the industry for the domains. Like, okay. Oh, I, Clear I the bar. I like it, man. I like everything. That was man, dope, man. If, if anything has a bar in it, JT's near it, man. He's <laughs> conquered it. this thing. 
<laughs> well, well, tell me this. Well, one, apparently you have to be bald to work at Media Options yeah, is, I know. What I, is what I'm picking up on. Um, <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm going to have to just uh, shave my head, tell Drew, hey, man, include me, put me I'm in. Finally, I'm finally ready. Yeah, I know. You know, it's crazy. But, uh, you know, some of the behind the scenes guys have better hair than us, you know. So <laughs> Paul, who's our tech guy, he's got like, he's got good hair. And, uh, you he's know, he's got so long he, flowing locks. He's like holding it down for all of us. Yeah, we're like, you got, he's like, hey, we're, he gets a haircut we're like nah man you gotta you gotta grow it out man you gotta be like that like doing all that kind of stuff on the, on the zoom calls and whatnot you know <laughs> tell me this man as we wrap up then what can we expect to see with domain sherpa in terms of where it's headed so you know we'll see continuing to you know focus on on our core mission right which is you know education around domain names right helping people be better domain investors Right. And, uh, you know, so that's going to continue with the, you know, like I said, just to, to helping to amplify the voices of those in the space, you know, largely through Josh and Digital Fortune, as well as, you know, some of the, you know, sort of the Sherpa shows themselves, and especially through the Domain Sherpa review, you know, we're going to continue to do our Down the Rabbit Hole series, which is going to focus on things like NFTs and crypto, you know, stuff that's related to domains, because again, all roads lead to domains and domains lead to everything. Um, you know, you may see a, a sports show here or there. Um, as we've got some pretty interesting stuff there. But again, with the ultimate goal is not just to, hey, we're going to turn this into barstool sports and talk about games and everything else, but talk about how it also, you know, the economics about it, the business of it. And, uh, and then, all, then to the extent that it ties back into digital assets and all that other good stuff, that's going to be what you're going to see. You know, we're going to continue to push the stuff with the swag. We'll probably redesign the site sooner than later. Uh, soon you'll see all of our content up on YouTube. Uh, not just new shows, but we're going to get the entire old archive up on YouTube to make nice. it more accessible to people. But then we'll be rolling out every new show on YouTube as well. So, you know, that way I know a lot of folks have been waiting for that. So that's going to happen. Um, we may even add a little bit more content um, by way of, of folks that will be because, you know, the goal is that it's no longer just, you know, the Sherpa show, but it's the Domain Sherpa network. And under right. that network, kind of like as if we're CBS, and under that network, you've got your shows, right? So you've got your NCIS or your Domain Sherpa review, you got your rabbit hole, you know, you've got your Sherpa sports, you've got your Domain Fortune or Digital Fortune. And, uh, you know, so ultimately, and do a better job, I think, of letting people understand too, like the calendar, you know, when are the shows coming? You know, when can you expect so that the, we're putting things out on a more consistent, regular basis? And then, you know, just trying to bring better and better content. I mean, we've got some really cool stuff coming, uh, you know, as far as some of the guests that we've got planned. Because, you know, the main space is small, you know, and I think it's important right. that we bring people in who appreciate domains. You know, when uh, Drew did the interview with Michael Saylor, for example, you know, that was and like that was huge. It was huge. And that was probably our most, I think that was the most viewed episode we've ever had yeah. um, because it was like you brought on a guy who has an audience already who's talking not just about, you know, uh, the stuff that like crypto and everything that he's in his own business, but, you know, then tying it back to domains, because obviously he's selling voice.com for $30 million was a big seminal moment in the domain space. You know, so it's like, you know, the more of that that we can do, but bringing people in that can help bring, you know, more of an audience and, you know, and then and separately, you know, on the business side, you know, working with more advertisers and, you know, trying to better monetize and just organize it from a professional standpoint. And uh, so that's what you can expect. You know, some of the stuff that's made us great, expanding on that as we best can, cleaning, you know, getting our house in order to make things a little bit more, you know, accessible and organized. And, uh, you know, and then just having a whole bunch of fun, man. We'll do the names con, red, uh, you know, red zone stuff. And, yeah. uh, do that again. We had you on there. I mean, we got you coming up in literally like two weeks on the show, man. I mean, I'm expecting boom right there. That's going to be a big, you know, big boost. And who and, knows? Uh, who knows? I, I who knows? I may actually throw my hat in the ring to join the the media options domain oh, Sherpa network. Hey man, never don't know. think don't think we haven't talked about that. You know, <laughs> in our know. own. You don't think we haven't talked about that with our own team. You know what I mean? As far as uh, <laughs> and we'd be more than happy if you wanted to. You know. Put your uh, your show under our flag, man. I mean, that would be, uh, and that's exactly the kind of content where it's like because you've got a, a you know a particular like you've got a really good signature voice, you've got a great understanding of the space, you've got a whole lot of you know great experience, and uh, you know, and and there's strength in numbers. I mean, part of what we're trying to do is you know like sort of the rising tide lifting all boats, and uh, 
but yeah, man, I mean, candidly, like, you know, the team, we, you know, there's only a few names, you know, because a lot of the folks like Josh is already on board and a lot of folks are, you know, that, you know, have a voice are already participating. And it's not like you haven't been a guest on the show. I mean, you've right. done that, but, you know, you've got your own, you know, you've got your own thing and, uh, you know, your vehicle would look nice in, in the garage, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so, man, what are we waiting on? What are we waiting on? And is everybody, know, everybody's listening is like, wait, is this a deal happening in is real this time? happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but you know, that's part of how bringing Josh on, right? Because, you know, we had a lot of overlap in the audience, but, you know, we felt he had a good, unique voice and, uh, you know, brought, you know, a really interesting, cool perspective, you know, he had, and he's had success in the space and he's, you know, he's a little younger than us, you know, so yeah. he's kind of, you know, and, um, you know, and then by providing, you know, the post-production, you know, to help tie that together as well as, you know, the way that we're putting the shows out, you know, that's another thing we're going to be working on too, which is, you know, improving the distribution. I mean, we currently put it out through, you know, iTunes or Apple, Stitcher, right. you know, some of that kind of stuff we put on the domain Sherpa site, but, you know, better leveraging YouTube as well as a few other things and just trying to get the, you know, we want to be overall like the, the domain Sherpa network. We want to be the barstool sports of domains and digital assets. Right. So it's like where you've got the barstool sports umbrella and then you've got their spitting chicklets, which talks about hockey. And then they've got their sort of pardon my take, which is kind of like their foundational show with big cat and stuff. And then they've got a few others, you know, they got the girls that do their show about the, right. uh, that, you know, so they've got like a whole bunch of, but they're all individual shows that have their own sort of fan bases, but they also benefit from being all part under the same umbrella, which was, again, really the approach in, you know, bringing Josh and then trying to, you know, sort of organize the shows a little bit more clearly because before it used to just be Sherpa would just come out every like two weeks and it, you know, might be domain Sherpa review. It could be an interview, right. all that kind of stuff. So those should be you know, again, a little bit more broken down. So people that want to focus on specific stuff have each will have their own feed too. So it's like, if we do a Sherpa sports that we're going to do on a more regular basis and people are like, nah, that's too far outside of the domain sort of lane for me. And that's fine. You know, just, you know, subscribe to the other shows, you know, a type of thing. So those are all stuff that like, that's part of what we're trying to work on. And remembering too, that this is just a piece of my day to day. Right. So it's like, if I could spend hundred percent of my time focused just on Sherpa, we'd be able to move through some of this stuff a little bit quicker, but that's also where strength in numbers is good. And having the whole kind of team, we're all like-minded sort of rowing in the same direction, you know, helps us get to where we need to get to. And, you know, even growing it somewhat organically, you know, will get us there because, you know, we're kind of like, we're going to put some, we're putting work into it and, you know, we're all trying to get to the same place. So we will get there. So anyway, man, so with that, you and I will absolutely have an offline convo and, uh, you know, cause like I said, man, I mean, there's no doubt that you'd be a great fit because you know, just everything that you bring to the table, man, I'm a fan of your show. You know, that's obviously why I'm here. It's why I've been trying to get you on Sherpa. It's why we had you on the red zone. It's why you've been on before. It's like, why well, it's why we're peoples. Why I haven't gotten you a shirt. That's just a little bit, that's different. different convo. The man can get me on everything else, but a name jet shirt. <laughs> name jet is- t-shirt. This is it. Uh, but no. hey, hey, I, I'm looking forward to a hoodie. I'm looking forward to a hoodie. So we can make we can make it happen. We can make oh, it. Oh, absolutely, work, man. man. That, that that's happening for sure. So well, anyway, good thing. I, I appreciate you having me on, man. Definitely. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, man. And uh I guess with that, if anybody here hears this or listens to it, um, which I hope everybody should be listening to it, like how should they get in contact with you? Yeah, so I'm on Twitter. You can find me, uh, so you can find Domain Sherpa at Domain Sherpa. You can find us online at domainsherpa.com. If you want to talk to us about brokering, buying, selling domain names, get at us at mediaoptions.com or at the at media options on Twitter. I'm personally on Twitter, J10ENBAUM. So it's like J10 and bomb, but like the 10 is the number 10. <laughs> but, you know, so, but we're not hard to find, man. I mean, you know, again, you know, you can get at us on Twitter, you can get at us on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you search for us there, search for me there. Like we're going to pop up on all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, for the domain Sherpa episodes currently, you can subscribe, uh, at Apple, uh, Stitcher, um, I think Google play, and then, or you can just go to domain Sherpa.com and check out all the episodes there. We got, you know, the full archive is there and soon it'll be on YouTube, but you can catch a few of our, the sailor episode, the Chris Jenkins episode. Those are up on YouTube. Uh, I think I got my freestyle up on YouTube. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, <laughs> and if you want to check out the music, I will, uh, 
you know, I'll post a link at some point. That's probably what I should do because people have been asking me and it's like, because it's on YouTube, but like not through me. You know what I mean? Like we, we right. have some digital distribution through like CD Baby and this goes back literally 10 years. So somebody just did a YouTube thing and there's a couple of different times it's sort of popped up. But, you know, that's one way you could listen. But Apple Music, Spotify, you know, we're out there. So but I'll, I'll share that link, too. But yeah, so there's a lot of different ways to get at us. And like I say about it, too, I mean you know, you watch a show, one of our shows, or you, you see some things, you have questions, you know, hit us up. We are, you know, people say we're like a good old boys club, but we're really not. Like we're always down to talk about domains. We're down to talk about crypto, NFTs, offline, online, you know, just uh, get at us in the comments on Domain Sherpa, get at us on social media. You know, let's, let's definitely connect. It's all good. And, uh, you know, and I hope that, uh, you know, some of these nuggets and whatnot that we shared on the show today can help some people. And, uh, you know, or at least be entertained listening to two dudes just having a conversation, man. You know, it's all good. Well, certainly, man, with that, we're out of time. So, JT, man, thank you uh -huh. again for joining us today and sharing your journey. Yeah, man. Well, thank you for having me. Awesome. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the newsletter sharing tips and tricks about the disciplines of digital strategies. Thanks. And that's all for now.